Okay, hello again. This is Thomas Tennis at the beautiful Thomas Tennis Academy in Southern California, where we've had a lot of rain lately, so I haven't been too active as far as making videos, but I think this will really be a fun one. In this one, I want to emphasize what the most important thing about a tennis stroke. What's the most important part of a tennis stroke? I mean, there's all these different body parts doing all these different things, and if you go online and you look at uh, people will tell you, you, you know, lagging and snapping your wrist, uh, getting your weight into it, doing all these different things, but all of those different things have to add up to one thing, and that is what your racket does. So what your racket does is by far the most important thing. If, if, if I can, I, I don't care what my body does, if I can get my racket to do the perfect thing, my body could be upside down and backwards, I could be standing on my head for all that, that matters. I, it just doesn't make any difference as long as my racket does the right thing. If my racket was just sitting here in air and, and, and did the right thing, it would hit the ball over the net and you'd get a lot of top spin and a lot of power. If it did the right thing without being attached to anything, but of course we can't do that. So what's the most important thing about um, the tennis stroke is what your racket head does. Not even the handle, what the head does. Okay, so there's, I've, I've divided the tennis stroke up into three different parts. One is the take back. And that is really like on a forehand, when you take the racket back, all you have to do is take your elbow back. Look at what happens to my shoulders, they rotate. <laughs> Take your elbow back till you're about here, okay? Don't take it back here. Take it, keep it bent, and it goes back to here. Okay, now I'm, my body's all set to hit the ball. My, my shoulder goes back with my elbow. Uh, and, of course, then you're, you're going to have, naturally, you're going to have your arm is going to kind of go with it here. So this people call this a unit turn. It's not that big a deal. Um, so you want your elbow, your, your left arm to kind of follow your racket. Okay, now everything is turned and I'm all set to smack the ball. With a two-handed backhand, it's the same thing. Take your elbow back here, but of course this is on the racket, so that's going to, the big unit turn thing is going to happen anyway. So the unit turn is not the big thing that's cracked up to be. But uh, it kind of automatically happens. Take your elbow back, you'll have the unit turn. If you're throwing something, if I'm throwing a ball, I'm not going to go back like this. My arm is naturally going to go with my my, my left arm is naturally going to go with my right arm, and that's going to pull open. Same thing with when you hit a ball, a tennis ball. My, my left arm is naturally going to go back with my racket. Some people hold on a long time to the racket. That's okay, too, but what, some do, some don't. But as long as your racket's here and you're really getting turned. Okay, so that's the take back. Part number two is the take forward. There's a take back and a take forward. So once I get my racket back and, and it drops into the slot back here, the next thing is to take forward, okay? The take forward is the racket's gonna come forward, but there's no rotation of the racket. There's no, you're not gonna start your arc back here. So the, the, the second part is to take forward and there it comes. So easy, just br bring it into position here. The take forward is from the very farthest point back of your racket until it, it reaches about mid belly, your belly butt, the, the butt of the racket. There's the butt of the racket reaching the belly. That ends, that ends the take forward. Same thing on the forehand. Same, what's really fun is the same thing on both sides. So now I'm gonna take it back. Take back's completed. Now I'm gonna take forward. I'm gonna bring my racket back, but it's gonna continue pointing straight back. It's not gonna come around like this, okay? So it's gonna go like this. And when the butt of the racket it approaches my be belly, that's when the take forward ends. So you got number one, take back, number two, take forward, number three, arc. And this is where it all happens. So what you're gonna do is, here comes the take forward and now the arc. And what's gonna happen is all your parts of your body that everybody talks about, your wrist, your arms, your torso, rotation, all of this stuff, has to produce a perfect arc like this. See that arc? It's a perfect arc. So what you want to do is make a perfect arc. And what's really important about the third step is that you accelerate into the ball 
on that arc. So it's an accelerating arc. So here's the take forward. Now here comes the arc. And, and when I do this, I'm gonna accelerate into the ball and pass the ball. You accelerate faster, 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 faster. So let's say I hit the ball right here. I'm gonna accelerate past the ball, okay? Same thing over here. But every in every case, you're gonna have an arc like this, okay? So let's say I had a big machine out there with all kinds of little gizmos and gadgets, and that machine held this racket, and so that it made this arc right here. <laughs> it wouldn't matter, it, it wouldn't matter if you have elbows, wrist snap, weight forward, weight backwards, upside down, as long as this arc right here, this accelerating arc occurs, okay? Right there, and right there. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna clarify what that arc looks like, what makes it up, and uh, and then we will uh, go from there. Blah, blah, blah. D -d 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 -d. <laughs> but okay, this video talks about the arc. Okay, this is what the golden mean hitting pattern looks like from above. I exaggerated slightly the racket at the beginning where you're going to be just bringing it forward and not rotating it. Most amateurs and club players like to start their forward arc when the racket is all the way back at the back of their swing, but that is completely incorrect and that'll mess you up and cause a chain reaction of things to happen that aren't good. Okay, this is the second and third parts of the tennis stroke. The first, of course, is the take back. The next is the take forward and the arc, two separate steps going forward. Okay, so you're going to bring the racket forward, and when the butt of the racket is right at your mid-belly, at your belly button, essentially, and that's where you're going to start rotating your racket and creating the perfect arc that you see in the picture here. Now, all of these different body parts that I've described and every other tennis pro describes has to make this perfect arc. This perfect arc is made through a coordinated effort of your hinging wrist, your upper arm rotation, and your shoulder. Okay, here's Andy Murray doing exactly what I'm talking about. He brings his racket forward, but it's still pointed to the back fence. Now when the butt of his racket reaches his mid-belly, that's when he starts his perfect arc. Start making your arc when the butt of your racket reaches your belly. Okay, in this video I'm stopping Djokovic right when the butt of his racket reaches his belly right there, see? And uh, that's when you want to start making your arc. All of Djokovic's body parts act as a team. None more important than the other. The most important part is you make this perfect accelerated arc. Okay, here I am, and I'm going to stop the video right when the butt of my racket reaches mid-belly. And here's my perfect arc. I don't know who has a better arc, me or Murray. I'll let you guys decide. Okay, now when your racket butt hits your mid-belly, that's where you start your perfect arc. Uh, so this will give you a mental image of what I'm talking about. Now it is so critical to accelerate your racket head around an arc. Do not accelerate to your target. You accelerate around an arc. There's no place on the arc where you go through three tennis balls or your racket goes out towards your target. There's no place like that. If you try to destroy your arc by taking your racket out towards your target or hitting through three balls or anything like that, you're going to completely destroy your acceleration. Okay, let's watch Mon Feel go around a perfect arc. See, he never goes out towards his target with his racket. It's always going in an arc. And he always accelerates into the ball. Now here's Sissipas, same thing. A perfect arc, and he accelerates beautifully into the ball. Ditto this former champion tennis player. Perfect acceleration and perfect arc. Now just a nanosecond before you make contact, you want to roll your forearm, what I called Popeye in my other videos, and that will give you tremendous spin and more power. Okay, watch Monfiel roll his forearm at contact. It's pretty obvious what he's doing, and you can do that too to get tons of spin and more power. Okay, if you roll your arm at contact, your racket's going to go up 50 degrees from the 20 degrees that it goes into the ball.
Backhands and forehands use the same pattern. There's no difference. You want that perfect arc every time. Now if you roll your forearm at contact, so your racket goes into the ball at 20 degrees and up 40 to 50 degrees at contact and that gives you tons of topspin. What's really fun about the arc is that if you hit it slightly early, the ball is going to go to the left corner. And if you hit it slightly late, it's going to go to the right corner. And you're not going to give it away because your opponent will have no idea where you're hitting the ball. The old way was to step in the direction of your hit, but if you do that, you're completely giving away where your ball is going to go and your opponent has a huge early warning system on where your ball is going. If and when you do everything perfectly, your racket hitting face will be facing the left fence and the racket will be pointing to the back fence at the end of your follow through. And if you do this and your racket is facing the side fence, and pointing to the back fence, you'll know that you're right near greatness. Like this guy. Okay, if you're new to this game, just start with your racket butt at your belly and make that arc until the racket points out to your target. And practice that until you get the timing down, and then go to the next steps. And that's it for this one, and see you on the next video.